elated. I mean, I was in the position of just not going in today. Can I be honest? I mean, and let me tell you what really brought it on. It was just the exhaustion of yesterday. And I worked three days in a row, and that is already hard enough to do. Um, but being in the flip pool, you just never know where you're going to be. And so I was just really exhausted this morning getting off of work. And I mean, barely wanted to get up to get ready for today. And so I was like, Lord, if I don't have to be here, just say the word. And thank God I'm not sick or nothing's wrong with me. I'm just exhausted, exhausted. I'm tired. And so days, you'll have those days. You'll have where it just feels like I can't do it today. And by all means, I mean, accept it for what it is, right? And so I'm just, you know, being grateful, thanking God for this moment, for this last day. And um, so I was pretty much like, you know, if I don't have to come in, Jesus just told me. And here I am praying this sad little prayer. And I got to thinking, like, what if this day gives me knowledge that I haven't gotten the whole time I've been in LPN, right? Sometimes I want to shut down and be like, enough is enough, you know, especially working hard this year. Y'all, when I say there was days I was going to work after school, 24 hours of being up, um, and tonight will be that night because I will be going to church in the morning, you know doing whatever it is I have to do, um, because I'm an evangelist first, um, and I give glory and honor to God wherever I go. It's not just, oh, let me wait till I get to church, like I'm clocking in at work to be a nurse. No, I'm a nurse 24 hours of the day, just like I am saved 24 hours of the day. It's not a clock in, clock out kind of thing, so I got to, you know, when I was praying, I got to thinking about, you know, what all God has done for me in not just the season, but just since I've been saved and how many times I've gotten tired, exhausted, and I kept on pushing um, through by the Holy Spirit that encouraged me, gave me patience when I needed patience, gave me that type of long suffering, y'all, that I needed to get through, not just that day, but just, you know, in general, just getting through. And so, you know, I'm in the parking garage waiting to go in, and I always call around 6 and 6.01. So I always call to be like, hey, what's my assignment? Um, just like you do in prayer. Well, what is my assignment for today? And uh, sometimes when we go into prayer, you know, we really don't want God to give us anything to do today. Or like, you know, I just want to relax. I just want to, you know, be safe and not have to think about anything because you do really cast all your cares on him and um y'all just just really just asking you know the the lady like hey you know what's my assignment they call they're so I don't call and be like hey do y'all because I was I wasn't calling today I was just like you know I called and just even her answer her picking up the phone knowing it's me I'm sure it's caller ID and she goes how are you today <laughs> didn't say hello this is you know staffing or hello you know like they usually do today was different and um I kind of laughed and I said you know what I'm fine I'm fine if we could all just be you know just okay with whatever it is that we are given we're fine we don't have any you know ailments yeah we got a lot of things we're, we're dealing with but you know in Christ we are fine we're okay and um wouldn't anything physically wrong with me, nothing, you know, just drained, really, and just paying, praying for the strength of the Lord, but I was getting ready, and I was thinking, this is my last day as an LVN, and anybody that is a nurse in school, anybody that has gone through the transition, know how this feels, know how you worked so hard to be an RN, you're so proud of yourself, you're just like, I can't wait to practice. I can't wait to, you know, do what I'm called to do. And then there's this, you know, not just the waiting period. We're really past all of that. We're really past, you know, the testing and all of that. We're done. We're done. But when it comes to that last day where you're like, some days you don't even know when your last day will be. 
as far as hardships, troubles, not saying that LBN is a hardship or a trouble, but just saying that you're moving to the next step, you never know how long it's going to last. And so just knowing that this is my last day, I'm excited. I'm excited even though my body is saying you're exhausted in, in my mindset, in my heart, I'm excited. So I took a couple of pictures before I left the house. And I was like, you're going to enjoy this day. You're going to, number one, learn something that you probably haven't learned your whole career as an LPN. Um, but just be unexpected. Just be expecting something. Not always thinking, okay, when is it going to be over? Because that's how I feel sometimes. Like, when is this going to be over? And y'all worked hard for it. But at the end of the day, it's done. That blessing is there. It's on the other side of this day and when I clock out in the morning y'all <laughs> I will be in blue and that doesn't mean a lot per se but to me it does it showed how hard I worked it showed how much I prayed how much I cried how much I you know put forth an effort to continue to be the person the purpose that God has for me and um, I just got on here to say that you know it's not always going to be Expectancy, especially um, from a nurse, is very different from anybody else because we have people's lives in our hands. And I got my assignment, and I was just like, oh, well, you know, it is what it is. And um, I don't always like my assignments. I'm not going to say it's like, oh, yay, you know, but I, I, I don't, I'm not going to change. Like, I'm going to be the best nurse, whether I'm wearing purple, green, yellow, or blue going to be the best I can be and I believe that's where you know that impatience comes from because you want to practice what you know and you can't right now and so you kind of leave it as an LBN you leave it to someone else's hands as far as going above and beyond but as for me that's what I, I long to do I long to go above and beyond but in these colors and what I practice in this certificate that I have at the LBN I can't I, I, I can't take the reins so to speak um, because I have an RN above me and that's fine I've been doing that you know since I became a nurse and now that I have the title to you know practice in such a way where I can go above and beyond um, I'm so excited to do that I'm very I'm wanting to do that this is why I went back to school um, to get more knowledge and understanding but y'all just be patient in the waiting it is almost over I know a lot of people may have doubted you I know a lot of people may have talked about you and you know a lot of people may not have seen what God knows in you and it's not up to them to you know say whether this is uh, a God thing or not there's going to be a lot of people that despise you a lot of people that are not going to understand your calling and that's okay that's okay um, because it's not their calling to understand. And so I'm just going to pop on here and say it's my last day. Y'all know how I am. <laughs> Y'all know how I am. I stay excited. But at the same time, I do get tired. I do get tired. And when I talk to the Lord, y'all, I talk to the Lord. I try not to, you know, get out here and be, you know, expressing all kinds of uh, negative thoughts and feelings. Because I know that ain't nothing but the enemy. And um, I get in the mind frame of what would Jesus do. I get in the mind frame of I know he was tired, but he pressed on. And I get in that mind frame of, you know, there's always something for me to do. Always. And so I'm thanking God. I'm thanking God for this last day. I'm thanking God that he's pushing me to pass this on to something else. Um, but to also be an encouragement to other people that may feel like, you know, this is it. Why am I, you know... <laughs> having to deal with all of this and you know strain and, and, and stress but you don't have to give it to God there's every day that you wake up there's a reason why you woke up and so I thank God that I have a job I thank God that you know even when I call there's somebody on the other side that really understands like what he means business number one but I'm always such a happy person always trying to be positive, never trying to cause any kind of tension or confusion, um, but I'm here to love like Christ has loved, and I'm here to be patient like Christ was patient, and be long-suffering, because um, I've, you know, heard negative things about people that are quote-unquote 
as far as not wanting the assignment they receive, but as soon as I get it, I say thank you and I hang up that phone. I don't, you know, whatever God has called me to do, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to deal with the gladness in my heart, even when I'm tired. And so when y'all see me in the morning, um, this will be it. Aaron has loaded and she's walked and ready. <laughs> Pray my strength in the Lord, y'all. Hey guys, so right off of work, I am there. We go. <laughs> this is my last day as an Oviana. <laughs> no warmer room. about to be changed over. Fill me in to Arena. Y'all, I'm so excited. Sorry, I'm trying to put me on there. I'm so excited. Uh -oh. She took off running. She thought I was going to hit her. <laughs> Bless her heart. Y'all, I am so excited. I'm just like grateful. It's over. All this hard work. <laughs> it's over over. So, I'm going to go grab some breakfast because we're going to church. And there we go. And thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I um, grabbed some coffee before um, I got off in the break room because I was just feeling a little exhausted, and I'm sure you will after 12 hours. But usually, that that little pick me up coffee does the trick. So, and I just pray and go on about my business. Usually, some Sundays I'll take a little nap, but um, I'm preaching this fourth Sunday, so I will be awake. <laughs> I will not go to sleep because I might not make it. So I'm gonna go get some more coffee. Take a shower, get ready for church. It's just that simple. Babe is still at work, and he usually gets off at six. So something must have went down last night. But anyway, he won't pick up my phone call. So babe is busy. So anyway, we're gonna go get some coffee and get ready for church. I'm gonna call mom and ask where the kids are because I usually take them to church. So anyway, y'all, her master in the Lord. Her master in the Lord. So it is Monday the 29th. I'm officially an RNA. I've got my jacket on and I don't have my um, jacket for my uh, RN, my RN scrubs. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to get it out. Um, I won't tag on dog. Um, she's like this all day long. Anyway, so today, it is 9.05, um, just in my Bible reading, um, I was going to share a scripture or two, um, because, you know, it's really speaking to me, and I pray that it speaks to you, you know, if you have not had a devotional today, here you go, um, but also, um, I'm going to be just going up there, getting my new badge, just so I'll be showing a little bit of that if I can, and then... I'm going to go on the floor and see when I need to um, get some of this, um, we call it health stream, but just some um, basic knowledge uh, as an RN, pretty much like all we'll be doing this week, and I do, I have my schedule with me, but all we'll be doing this week is we will be going to classes, 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 but guess what, this is off on the weekend, and it's paid week, so you know I'm excited. I was hoping to meet up with a few of my friends and um, and just going to prayer, church, whatever I can do, y'all, because I'm not really sure what my schedule schedule of ICU is going to be. Um, I know ICU gets to pick their days. There's a lot of floors that get to technically pick their days, but there are so many levels. So the, you know, the ones that have been there the longest will get those days they want. 
Um, and y'all know me, I'm so used to the weekend. It pays more, why not do the weekend? But um, there's a few days that I wanna work during the week so I can have those weekends off, so I can be able to go to church, so I can be able to uh, be with my family. Um, there's just a few things that I wanna get done in February. Um, and so orientation though, I know on the floor, um, with a preceptor, I know that I will have to work that person's schedule. So whether it be a female or male, um, we will first be doing day shift. And I believe we'll do like four weeks or so. I'm not really sure or, you know, for sure on that. But just by ear hearing that um, it will at least be four weeks of training on the floor. I am in a one-year residency. So I'll be going back and forth to classes while going um and working orientation on the floor. Um, and then I will have, I believe, like overnight orientation. I don't know if it'll be two weeks. I don't know if it'll just be a week. It depends on how well I'm taking everything in. And guys, it does not take me long to learn on hand. Like I am a like hands-on person. So it, as long as you let me touch it, feel it, do it myself, I'll take it slow. I'm not gonna try to hurt anybody. But as long as you let me touch it, let me touch I mean, the first time, you know, I see it's being done, I'm watching, I'm taking notes, like I literally take notes. But as far as that, I sit down and study those notes because as long as I know what to do and I got it in my head and there's a visual there, even if I didn't see you do everything, I will at least go to YouTube and be like, hey, what's the proper way to do this or do that? I'm not going to try, I'm not going to just wait on someone to teach me, especially if the preceptor is busy. I'm going to teach myself. I'm going to learn some way, somehow, some way, somehow. So anyway, I'm super excited. Um, there was a type of anxiety yesterday because when I opened my email, um, I saw um, we had like, um, we have Epic at our hospital. We had some Epic exercises we had to do. And y'all, when I was uh, starting off as an LBN, that sucker was like seven, eight hours long. So I was like, let me try to get this started. Well, I can't start that until we actually go to the classes. So I was like, well, that's out. So then I went to health stream because that's um, more of like your floor type of like stuff you can do. And so it's not overall like Epic. Epic is overall RN, like how to Lexicomp and all that other stuff, like teaching you how to um, do blood, uh, get blood from the lab, stuff like that. Like that's more specific to the RN uh, and you know, each floor. But health stream is more like ICU. Like I was looking for my ACLS part in here because you know you got to do a part online and then you have to go to a class. That wasn't in there, so I have to be you know ask somebody about that because I need to renew it. I already had my ACLS as an LVN, but it went out um, this uh, this month in January, so I'm trying to get that renewed. Um, but there's like. I want to say like 83 health streams. <laughs> so I was a little overwhelmed because I was looking at them and they are very specific to uh, ICU. And I was just like, hmm, that's interesting. Because I'm, I'm, I'm the type, like, I just want to print everything out. I'm just going to have like a whole ICU book because <laughs> I need to know. I need to know. I am a big protocol person because I don't want to hurt anybody. Like, that's not my, you know, like, I want to take care of these people, y'all. And so I'm very high strung. Anyway, so that to say, with that anxiety, I went straight to the book, to the Bible. And so... <laughs> Anyway, so we're going to start in Psalms 139, and it's just, y'all, it's about God's omnipresence and about his omni, um, omniscience, which means omnipresent, he's everywhere at the same time, and then omniscience just means he's all-knowing, so he knows everything. So, um, if you don't get anything out of this uh, vlog or just anything out of today, know this about God. So, we're going to start with uh, um, David Psalm, Psalms 139. Oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You understand my thought from afar off. You scrutinize my path 
and my laying down and are intimately acquainted with all my ways. Even before there is a word on my tongue, you have in, behold, O Lord, you know it all. You have enclosed me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is too high, I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol or my grave, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the dawn, if I dwell in the remotest part of the sea, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand will lay hold of me. If I say, surely the darkness will overwhelm me and the light around me will be my night. Even the darkness is not dark to you and the night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light are alike to you for you formed my inner parts. You wove me in my mother's womb. I will give thanks to you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works and my soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the depths of the earth. Your eyes have seen my unformed substance and in your book were all written the days that were ordained for me when as yet there was not even one how precious are so are your thoughts to me O god how vast is the sum of them if i should count them they my outward number outnumber the sand when i awake i am still with you oh that you would slay the wicked O god Depart from me, therefore, men of bloodshed, for they speak against you wickedly, and your enemies take your name in vain. Do I hate those who hate you, Lord? And do I love those who rise up against you? I hate them with the utmost hatred. They have become my enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there be any hurtful way in me and lead me in the everlasting way. And I read to you Psalms 139 and a lot of those little scriptures that, you know, I read is very famous. Like, um, I'm wonderfully and fearfully made. Um, search me, oh God, search my heart um, and see where my heart lies. And um, God put this in my spirit to look up because um, not just the anxiety, because that's exactly what my thought pattern was. But when he had put the scripture in my mind that, and I was just like, hmm, what are you trying to say? Um, and I get to reading, because I don't just read one scripture, but I get to reading about um, what David was expressing about God and truly how he was spirit led when it came to his omnipresence and his omniscience and he was saying you know before I was even born you knew me you know the days I'm going to be here on this earth no matter where I am you are with me and search my heart show me it's like he's saying God I know how big you are I know how amazing you are but yet still in my own heart there's doubt there's anxiety there's um, anger there and then he goes to God with this search my heart show me where I'm wrong show me where I need to be fixed and it and it begins to release all this pressure off of him because you know as he's talking to God and he's singing to God because this is a psalm it's a song God also reveals to him while he's talking about him that, okay, you know, I'm, got, I'm getting a little angry because now, you know, I'm mad at the ones that don't like you. I'm mad at the ones that, you know, uh, talk with your name in vain. He starts getting upset because he's like, you know, God is amazing. And here they are playing with your name. Here they are playing with who you are. You, you have protected me. You have got, you knew me. And here I am 
you know, giving thanks. And there's people out there that could care less about you. But here I am giving thanks. And then he was like, you know what, God? Help me. Because God is different than we are. Thank God. We'll put people in hell, right? But God is saying, no, no, no. Don't do that. Um, and David is like, search my heart. Help me to be like you. Help me to be more like you when it comes to this anxiety, this this pain that I feel when it comes to, you know, the, the issues of our enemies, right? Because we were once enemies to God. We can't sit here and be like, oh, you know, I was wrong with Jesus since I was born. And to a certain degree, you know, your family might have been in the church, you might have been born in a Christian home, but you yourself had to make that decision to serve God. And I promise you, it wasn't when you, when you took that first breath, you didn't know anything about him. And that's the whole point of this. There's a lot of people that just don't know. They have no idea. And it's really our fault because we're not shining our light like we're supposed to. We're not doing what we're supposed to do. So they don't see God anywhere around. And the whole part of this is, yeah, you see the enemy, but do you see yourself? Do you see how you can become God's enemy as well? Being angry, being anxious, being worried about things that is out of your control. God is big enough that if he's in the depths of the sea and we cannot see, if he is in the heavens and we cannot see, and if he knows even our thoughts, even our death day, then God knows our enemies. He knows how to defeat them, but also he knows how to save them. Not every one of your enemies is going to stay an enemy. You have to do your part. And so I love the fact that David is just like being so honest with God. Because there's nothing wrong with being honest with God. It's when we go outside of God and we start gossiping about such and such. It's when we go outside of God that we start talking about, you know, our husbands, our wives, our everything. We start just going outside of God instead of coming to God and saying, God, this is my issue. God, this is what I'm thankful for. This is what hurts me. This is why I'm mad. This is why I'm mad. like. There's so much that we're talking to God about, and it releases us from that. But then God wants to help us get over that. Nobody else has that power but God. And if you seek anything outside of God, that is your master. You're looking for someone else to give you, give you the answer. And here He is, as high as the heavens. It's deepest that are, I mean, deeper than that. Can we be honest? Like, he was just giving a, you know, like, reference. But he was, like, God is deeper than the, than the sea. Listen. He didn't make the whole universe. And it, it can be hard to comprehend somebody that's never been created before. Because we're creation. And we've been created. And that can be so hard to fathom that, you know, somebody was here and never was created. But at the end of the day, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful that whom I look to is higher than all of this, that can see afar off. I thank God. I thank you, Jesus. So, y'all, that was Psalms 139. Um, if you have any questions, you know, put them in the comment box. But here's the thing. God loves you. And when you spend time with him, you will see that. You will truly see a love book here. Um, and you'll see it through the eyes of others, but also the Holy Spirit will move in you and try to get out um, what it is that ails you, what it is that's bothering you. Um, but he's moving very quickly. He's very swift in what he does. And he's amazing. He's amazing. So anyway, guys, I am going to pray and I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to go get my heart and all that. <laughs> And so, y'all, pray my strength in the Lord. I love him. All you have to do is submit your prayer. Hey, guys. So, I got my badge. Um, I went to meet with my um, coordinator for the ICU modules. Um, the Epic, I guess. And um, really, I was just down there to see if I could do some home stream and get some of that out of the way. Um, because you can do some of these modules at home and just give your manager the uh, time slip of how long you've been working on it. So um, I just don't, thought to do that because she's trying to get things done in that room and I did not want to bother her. I'm sorry. And so 
that's what I'm about to do. I'm just going to go home, do some health stream. I'll show my badge a little later uh, because I'm driving. <laughs> and so, I love you guys. I will see you in a little bit. Y'all, I'm so excited. I was, I, you just, you look different, of course, but you feel different knowing what all you had to go through to get this stack-up license. And so, I'm doing everything I can. Um, to do the best that I can. And so, I'm going to finish my coffee and head home and do some mouthwatering. Whoops. Okay. See you guys later. What it's giving. So, just like it was when I had bought it, it's still got. I gotta go put my shoes on. <laughs> I don't. Y'all know it's the crux for me. <laughs> anyway, so we just got our jacket orientation day two. I'm going to go find my um, badge <laughs> because I was playing around with it yesterday and see if the child is ready. <laughs> see if the child is ready. Okay, so I just put on my glasses so I could see if the makeup looks good, it looks fine. We're about to go. Okay. See y'all in the car. Hey guys. So I just got on here. It is Tuesday. It's about 4 30 in the afternoon. Um, just got out of um orientation. Um, I do have my badge. I was gonna show my badge. I um got out of my work clothes because um I can show you a picture of that. Really, it's not a big deal. But, um, so I'm super excited. Um, we are going to be doing, um, orientation all this week. So today's Tuesday. We'll finish up on Friday and then, um, then I will be on the floor orientation. Not really sure who my preceptor is, um, but I'm really excited to start. I'm really excited. So, um, I came on here just to show you my badge, show you, you know, pretty much let you know what we did for day one. Um, it was really like um, the lab came, we had case management, went over case management, um, went over the glucometer, and um, a lot of these things I'm already oriented to because I work at this job previously. And so it's just refreshers. There's a lot of new things that I did not know <laughs> about that daggum glucometer, but it's fine. I've, I I was listening intentively because um, I'm going to be on my own um, soon. So I'm just excited, elated. We will not have any LVNs. Not really sure about CNAs, um, but to me, LVNs are gold. Just knowing the background of LVNs and working in that field. I wish we did have LVNs on our floor. Um, um, because we did a lot of work as LVNs, especially in our hospital. So anyway, I look a hot mess. I look, you know, like we've been pushing eight hours. And so first day was amazing. It was amazing. Got to know, um, a lot of the people in our orientation class. I want to say there's like 30 or 40 people in our class. Like oh, there's only the one seat left and there's three rows of like 10 to 11, um, per row. And so this pretty big class, um, there's a few that, um, are just like myself. We just graduated RN and, um, but we've been LVNs for years. And so we're just getting into that RN role and learning, um, what it is that our hospital, um, requires out of RNs for protocol. We know pretty much a lot, um, but it's just good to know firsthand. And then, um, we just went over basics, um, as far as like, um, I'm trying to think of what we started off with, but, um, wish I had the schedule, but I don't have it right in front of me. Um, but anyway, just like your basics, I think tomorrow is going to be, you know, more, um, like your fire hazards and stuff like that. Just really basic things that uh, the hospital teaches every employee. Uh, we went over code blue and all the codes of the hospital, um, who answers those, who, you know, the RN is pretty much, you know, in charge, the one with the ACLS, uh, whoever gets to that code first, 
that kind of thing, just kind of protocol things for the hospital. Clinical, I believe, is on Friday, so the RNs and the LVNs will be coming on Friday to do the clinical part um, where we will learn the NG2 protocol and, you know, dressing changes, things like that, protocols that we will do. We did that in LVN, um, honestly in uh, LVN orientation, um, but it's just really going back over those basics as far as what the RN will do, because we did for the LVN, but we're doing RN now. So um, basically, we're just kind of going over um, protocols for the hospital for RNs. Um, there's two ICUs, there's me and another young lady, and then there's a whole bunch of EDs. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Um, there's a fee that's going off to different hospitals that's kind of sister properties and they orientate here at our hospital and then um it's just a lot of people that are excited to start their new journey i thank god i thank god um that i do have a few friends in this class and a lot of us have um, been working at st michael's um already so we know each other like we know the ins and outs and so a lot of us are just anxious to get on the floor already. We're so excited. We're wearing the blue. Don't get me wrong. We are, we are like excited to get on the floor. So we can't wait for this week to be over so we can really learn our rows and um, what it is that we do on our floor. Um, there's a few day, a few night shifts, um, but I believe everybody will orientate on days. I think I orientated on nights. I don't think as an LVN I orientated on days at all. Um, and that's fine. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be on days first. But um, also, I found out that I was trying so hard to get this little ACLS done, y'all, because I've been ACLS certified since I've been working at my past job at Post Acute um, for two years. And it expired this month. And so here I am trying to get this thing done to get it out of the way because I know how strenuous it can be sometimes. And so um, I was emailing a lot of people, a lot of the clinical instructors up there, and uh, they're like, oh, we're going to put it in your health stream so you can go ahead and get that done. And then um, I got an email right when I got home that was saying, sorry, you got to wait till after orientation. And she was like, we spoke to, uh, you know, one of the clinical instructors and they were like, your orientation is going to be 10 weeks, 10 weeks, 10 weeks for orientation. Now, I'm not saying that I don't want the 10 weeks. That's not what I'm saying, but it's very hard to go off of. Um, number one, you're with the preceptor. So it's like you're based off of their schedule, basically. So you're not really sure what days you'll work. Um, you may get a month in advance. That way you may know like for a month what you're working and that's it. But for 10 weeks, I'm not going to know a for sure schedule. And so it's based off of my preceptor. And that's the only thing that bothers me because, you know, I was really hoping to get a schedule in um, February or, you know, a little after February to where I can, you know, let my family know and all that kind of thing. And so that's what is kind of like up and down as far as it goes with orientating is when you get a preceptor, you're not sure what days you're going to work. You're really going to be based off of the preceptor. And so, and who can precept. And so, um, I'll definitely for sure have a day and a night preceptor. I'm just not sure what their schedule is. And so, that's going to be, you know, kind of hard as far as like, you know me, you still working um, on the weekends and being able to have someone, you know, have my daughter on the weekends and that's it. But as far as like, you know, picking up and, you know, dropping off and things like that, I won't have a for sure, for sure schedule, um, I guess until Friday, as far as like how these first couple of weeks are going to go with my preceptor and, um, and there's two of us. And so anyway, that's the only like downside I see from all of this. I'm super excited to start the ICU. I am so ready. Um, I think they'll be kind of surprised how much I do know. Um, because I worked at Post Acute, I did work at LTAC, and so we dealt with intubated patients. We dealt with trachs. We dealt with um, CPAPs and BiPAPs and 
you know, all kinds of drips. And so it wasn't that I was titrating anything at all. It's not that, but I did see that in my field and I did, you know, um, go in rooms that did have those and was taught by those nurses there what to do. And so um, I think they'll be really surprised at how much I know. So that 10 may turn into like six. And don't get me wrong, like I want to know as much as I can from my preceptor. That's why I'm so excited to start during days because I know they do a lot more than nights. Um, but it's not that nights go without anything going on. It seems like everything kind of, you know, goes on at night from what I hear and see in the ED. And so, um, especially overnight. So um, now that I'm no longer floating floor to floor, this is just where I will mainly be based out of because um, I do want to float to the ED whenever they have like overage of nurses. A lot of people do not want to be floated, but I'm just one of those ones that's kind of used to it. So I'm okay with floating to the ED. I'm okay with floating to 6 North, 6 South wherever it is you need me to go because ICU is really the only floor that I have not worked on. Um, NICU, I worked on it one day and um, I don't really like the NICU. So I'm hoping, not that I don't like what they do. It's not ab about what they do. I just, those little babies, I just don't want to, you know, mess with those pretty precious babies. And so I'm um, that's my least confident is <laughs> NICU. Is Nikki those little babies and so everything else though is like came on so I'm really just wanting to learn more wanting to do more and just show my attributes show my knowledge show you know what I was really trained to do and be and I'm very confident in that and I'm confident in um, what I was taught at my college I'm very confident in what I was taught as far as experience in my other jobs um, I was um, also a traveler for about a year, so I've got a lot of experience under my belt, so I think they will be kind of surprised. Just because I'm a new RN doesn't mean I'm new to the environment um, that I will be exposed to, and I'm really excited um, and also very humbled um, in the fact that there's a lot of things I don't know that I'm so willing to learn. Um, and I'm thankful for the opportunity to get to know as much as I can, especially in the ICU people run from the ICU and I'm like running to you. I'm like, invite me in, please, <laughs> please. Um, because I want to know, I want to know everything I can do for my patient. It's just who I am. I am a giver. I am the type that just wants to do everything I can. And I'm not going to run from doing my job. Like I come in early. I don't call in. There's no reason to. And so I'm very thankful. You know, that last day I really it was really testing me, but uh, I was talking to my other fellow co-workers and everybody was like, you know, <laughs> we just want to be in the blue already. Like <laughs> we're sick of the job, not just <laughs> we're just sick of, you know, being in, in, in the maroon because we work so hard for the blue. But anyway, guys, um, I just got in here to show you my bag. Let me see if I can get it to where it does not show my work. So first of all, let me show you this part because my friend got me this. It's super cute. I'm not sure where she got it, but I think you can get it off of Amazon and um, Walmart even. But it's super cute. And so y'all know what it's either peak or leopard for me. And then um, they got... Now I took this picture probably like two it's okay. years ago. You pretty much get what I'm trying to do here. Um, <laughs> I see you cardiac. Okay, so anyway, guys, just hopping on here to let you know what, how my first orientation went. It was great. The first day was amazing. Um, we'll go back uh, again, like I said, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then I'll have the weekend off, be able to make it to church, do some things with my homegirls. They are off this weekend, so, you know, we may just go out to eat. It's just something simple as just, you know, just, just being there for one another. And so... Um, they're really like sisters to me. We've gone through so much together and um, I appreciate them and I know they appreciate me. The love is mutual. The love is mutual. Oh my God. Okay. I'm going to go over here. Hey guys, it is I'm Wednesday. Go over it is 925. No, Wednesday. Sorry. It is Thursday. It's 925 and um, I'm just kind of laying in bed. I do have clinicals a little later today. 
um, because there is like 26 people in our class, they kind of split us up to do some computer work. So I don't go in until a little later today. So I kind of have a little rest <laughs> before I have to go back to work today for orientation work. But I just wanted to get on here and just kind of share what happened Wednesday and today. So um, Wednesday we went to class like usual, 8 a.m. and got out around 4. And so um, we just did a lot of like basics. We did um, just going over protocols for the hospital that everyone should know. So that required everyone to be in the class. Um, there is um, new RNs, there's um, LVNs to RNs, there's RNs that are switching roles, and so um, that required everyone to be there, CNAs, um, patient techs, um, and so we were all required to be there to, uh, yesterday. So um, Wednesday was my day to go to church. We um, And so Wednesdays usually go to church on Wednesday, and um, and we do that on Wednesday. So it wasn't really a lot of time to, you know, get on here and say anything. But um, so what we're looking at today, um, you know, I always try to read a scripture a day and just try to talk to the Lord as far as that scripture goes. But always praying, always in my spirit praying. Um, but as far as like um, getting into the word, that's my main goal of the day. Um, whatever it is that God has me to do, I need to know. Um, what it is that he's requiring out of me, especially for that day. And so I'm finding a lot of um, LVNs having this, um, not that they're not confident, it's not that, um, but even trying to get to the point of becoming an RN, I'm kind of staggering at what God wants from them, um, simply because um, sometimes the road can be hard. Like we may, those that have made it may seem like it, it was easy, it may look easy, or, you know, that we had no oppression or, and I don't want to say oppression, but we didn't have um, like any problems, any storms come our way. Because um, how many of you know that um, anything that is, you know, with having is going to be hard. You're going to have to work hard at it. Um, but it's easier said than done, right? Um, and Jesus said, you know, anything is possible with me. He didn't say anything is easy. <laughs> And I see why, because um, there are so many things that pop up. We think, you know, I'm going to wait for the perfect time to get in nursing school. I'm going to wait for the perfect time to go back to school or what have you. Um, but there is no perfect time, guys. We're not living in a perfect world. We will not find that perfect time. Um, when God puts that desire in your heart, you have to push past all of the um, obstacles in your life to get uh, what God has called you to do. And if he's making a way. Um, then it is definitely possible. Um, God is not afraid. He's not ashamed of you. Um, he's not looking at your uh, past when it comes to those that are forgiven in Christ um, through by a repentant heart. And let me say it that way, uh, because we can be out here doing and saying all kinds of things and thinks God's going to bless us with this new position um, because he's not out here to bless us. He's not. That's, that's the devil. And so when you find yourself kind of in a fork in the road, the decisions that you now make depend upon um, who you are in Christ, number one, because your confidence is not going to be in you. You don't know a lot, um, whether you you know, know that or not. Um, but what you do know, you stand on, right? You know that, you know, what I know, what I've experienced, um, what I've gone through um, can help me in future um, in future experiences. And so I don't want anyone to take away from this page that it was easy, um, that I'm just out here living life because cause I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to humbly share my experiences because one, I'm an evangelist and evangelists have a lot of testimony. Um, God puts us through sometimes it seems like the most so people can see that God is still the same. Um, and I say that in a sense of when you look at me physically, I don't look like I should be in anybody's ICU um, because of, you know, my teeth or because, you know, it looks like I, I am obese when I look at my BMI. Um, but I move very swiftly um, and I'm just wise with everything that I do. 
in a sense of asking God, what do I do next? Or what is it that you need me to do either for this patient or for my family, or for my home? And so very, I make wise decisions because I, I, I get counsel from the Lord, number one. And then y'all look like I got a lazy eye. This eyelash is ready to pop off of here. But also when I think about um, all the things that I've gone through, um, I had a miscarriage, what, two, three years ago, and her name was Miracle. I had to have surgery um, to get her removed, and I lost all but five uh, milliliters, deciliters, whatever you want to call it. My H&H &H was very low, and I had to get eight units of blood, and um, and was brought back to life. And so, <laughs> you know, that's majority of the reason why I love the ICU so much. And I don't really share it in that way. I share it as in my past experience um, with the jobs that I've had. But honestly, um, I looked towards the ICU, one, because of my experience with them. They were so gentle, they were so kind, and um, they had the knowledge to help me in, in a desperate need. And whether they be saved or not, God use them, and God can use you, especially if you are saved. And so with us moving forward, um, just in my life in general, um, I am, it's hard. I can have children. It's not that I can't. God has not withheld any child from me. It's, it's my body is not sustaining life. Um, inside of me, whether it be the fibroids or what have you. I've been pregnant four times and only had one child. And a lot of you can say, you know, well, you know, who's this lady that serves God so well and, um, and has so much adversity in her life and y'all and, and I love you know sharing my testimony I love you know not that it doesn't hurt or you know that uh that I haven't gone through a a type of not understanding why because you know I did talk to the Lord about that and um I've had several people uh, come to me and say you know I had a dream you had a child and you know and there is that question in the back of my mind like was it me <laughs> Um, because, you know, in, in, in accepting who God is, that is humbling. Let me say that again. It doesn't matter who you are. You're going to have trials. You're going to have testing. You're going to you're gonna go through things in life. And you're going to wonder, are you on God's side? Like, what is it that I've done wrong? Lord, please show me. It's not necessarily anything you've done wrong. Sometimes God withholds things for your good. And go, well, what good is that? You know, withholding a child, withholding something that, you know, you and your husband want. Plenty of people out here getting blessed with children, but why is it not me? And when you look at yourself or whatever it is, the issue that you're dealing with that you've been praying about for a very long time, um, that should show you that God is in your life. That should, that should keep you humble, no matter how high you get. Listen, RN, you know, worked hard for it. Um, but I am RN and I'm very knowledgeable, very wise, um, but I'm not more knowledgeable and wiser than God. And so that keeps me humble. That keeps me holding on to his hand rather than running away or blaming God for anything. Um, because at the end of the day, my heart is still with God. Like a lot of the things have gone on in my life and I don't try to you know, run away from those issues, run away from those problems. I try to run to God, um, even if it's the answer that I don't want to hear, even if it's the answer that I'm just not ready for at the time. I asked it. I wanted to know. And so if you don't want to know, don't ask. <laughs> don't inquire until you're ready. But at the same time, y'all, um, this journey has not been easy. Everyone that I talk to about this journey, anyone that's just, you know, just very in, just very questionnaire when it comes to my life, I am very transparent because I know one day it will probably help you. You may not know it for now. You may know, oh, that couldn't be me. And, you know, thank God it's not you. Thank God. This life is not easy. And I don't try to make it look easy. I just try to give you a day in a life. That's it. And, you know, and I always say, you know, ask questions or whatever, because it doesn't bother me. I'm, I'm exposed, but not in a way to where anyone can truly harm me in any way, because I am anchored in Jesus Christ. But also, y'all, you've got to stop being afraid of the enemy. 
He's not afraid of you, but he is afraid of God. And so one thing that I, you know, would say as far as your journey in life is, you know, line up with the Lord, line up with his will. Um, and you may not have such a hard time. Um, everything that you're fighting against, you probably ain't got to fight. Um, because God is not in everything, okay? And neither is the devil. Sometimes we, we allow these things in our lives in our lives because we're not really we don't have an understanding we don't we're not one we don't want to know what god wants from us or what he needs for us to do in order to continue down this path and this journey isn't a long journey you know i used to be a little baby i can remember all the things that i've done as a child i'm thinking how did i get this old and i thank god and, you know, I'm so grateful, but I'm like, oh my goodness, I've gone through so much. You know, God, you have really brought me a long way. And I'm very thankful, very grateful. Um, but it doesn't just stop there. The enemy is always going to form some type of weapon. He's going to always try to deter you, distract you. He's going to always try to get on your bad side. He's going to always have you looking at the negative things of life. He's going to always try to bring up your past. He's going to always try to make enemies come before friends. Like He's going to make sure he's going to find a way to try to stop you. And the, the Bible is very clear resist the devil and he will flee but our issue is we we not only mingle with the devil but we're bargaining at times and we don't even realize it and so we have to cut off the the, in, the enemy's hand in our lives if we want to be successful in Christ. And that doesn't mean just the R and a, it could be family, it could be finances, spiritual things that we're dealing with, you know, that we shouldn't even have to deal with. But what if we were hanging on to God's unchanging hand, half of these things would not even exist in our lives. And so I'm just praying for, you know, you all that you, you truly understand your walk with Christ before you make a decision this big, you know, as far as changing your whole career. Um, because at the end of the day, y'all, the more higher you go up, whether it be MSN, BSN, nurse practitioner, the more humble you have to be and the more God proves that he is God and you are not. And so with that knowledge and with that wisdom, comes a responsibility and an acknowledgement of who he is and it shouldn't change you in any way but make you more humble make you more understanding make you with the fruits of the spirit more peaceable more um self-control um those things come with the holy spirit and the way you can increase that is by reading his word and obeying and living um and that is not easy. I'm not saying it's easy, but it is possible. It is possible. We go out there and do far more, you know, harder things in life. But this is, this will be the hardest thing you've ever done. And so, you know, y'all, I, I really don't really talk about God and Jesus. Oh, I do. I do a lot on this page. Um, but I just needed to share that because I see a lot of people like, um, give me insight. Give me, you know, what you did and how you did it. It was God, honey. Since it was Jesus. There's no way I should be this far without his hand in my life. There's so many people that are questionable. Like, you know, how did you, how did you get this? And there's plenty of people that can share their story. It's not just me. It's not just me. You know, I follow people on YouTube all the time that are talking about the hand of God on their life and how they made it this far. And it's just their purpose. It's, it can, it's not necessarily just being an RN. -a. I mean, you know, they've gone to be nurse practitioners. They've gone on to be, you know, judges and lawyers and things of that nature. But what you do see in common is the hand of God in their life. And it's not to be like them. And, you, and if you're following someone to be like them, your motive is wrong. Um, you need to be following to be like Christ. And how do I see Christ in this person? How do I see Jesus? But anyway, you know, I just wanted to share that because I don't want you to, um, if you got the wrong picture, I'm sorry. But I am here right now to clear that up. It is Christ. It is Jesus that has gotten me this far. And I thank him. I thank him. I thank him. No one deserves the glory 
other than him. And so if you feel this unction in your spirit or you feel like, you know, something's not right, pray about it. Let God lead you to what the answer is, um, what it is you may need to change, what it is that you need to fix, or just relax. Let him handle it. Let him handle it. You keep doing what you're supposed to be doing. You keep studying. You keep seeking the Lord. You keep putting him before all things, and he will work the rest out, right? And so I pray you all strengthen the Lord. Um, truly, um, this is the end of my vlog because Friday is just um, going to class again. And then um, and then we'll just have the weekend out to go to church. And so, y'all, I'm just going to end the vlog right here because what else do I need to say today, this week, other than trust the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto your own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Y'all have a good weekend.